down, down, down. Yes, so it doesn't make like any crazy, okay? Yep. Doesn't open up. And here much. goes the attack. He has the legs. He has the acceleration. The gap is still 10 seconds. 10 seconds, 10 seconds seulement, c'est rien. I'm really happy to be 10 seconds behind him so I can be more attacking mind more than uh, defensive. C'est pour moi un véritable combat de boxe où les champions se rendent coup pour coup. I do like uh, time trials like this. I really like it. It suits me quite well. I like it when you have to change the rhythm all the time. I think still a lot can happen, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty tight battle. Pour l'instant, ça se joue au point, mais je pense que ça va finir par un chaos, peut-être dans la dernière reprise. It's time trial day. It's every man for himself. Relaxation yesterday. Welcome to stage 16. Is it uh, Edmondson? So he did miss his start. He was supposed to go off the line at uh, 11 and he came running up there. They're like, I rolled up, they're like, go, go. Huh? <laughs> this is incredible. DSM are having an absolute nightmare. I haven't seen that in a time trial for years. And, and some of you guys, uh, I think, was it two or three of you crashed just uh, after the ramp? Crashed? Yeah. No, not us. Oh, and he oh, crashes. Crash of Dagen Kolb. What is going on with Team DSM? Oh, and another crash in this corner. Two riders missed their starts and two riders have crashed. Well, obviously we're in a time trial, so we don't really talk to people. <laughs> practice the bike change here. We get him going. It shows you how long a bike change could take. You would hope that Pagancha will do it an awful lot quicker. Sagan will pass you and we can train on the change on the spot where we will do it today. Mads Pedersen and Remy Cavagna were the fastest of the first 50 riders out on course. The Dane only spent a few minutes in the hot seat before he was ousted by the French champion. Cavagna clocking an average of 36.7 kilometers an hour as he went 25 seconds quicker. Wow, Van Aert off the start line. Van Aert is underway. Can he win this time trial? Well, he's my favorite for today. And Van Aert is behind Cavagna by 11 seconds on the live uh, timing. Van Aert did lose a bit of time in the rolling early part of the stage, notably due to a change in wind direction but the Belgian champion went flying up the Côte de Domancy to snatch the best time from Cavagna. He's nearly at the finish line now. Look at him go. Van Aert is going to smash the time of Cavagna by 15 seconds. Pogacar is underway. You can see the urgency in this man's body already. Very interesting to see that there's a road bike on the on the roof car. Vengegaard goes. All the riders are underway. Destination, Combleu. Away from the battle for yellow, Carlos Rodriguez and Adam Yates were facing off for the final podium spot. The British rider hauling back 24 seconds on the young Spaniard to go third overall. Meanwhile, the impressive Peo Bilbao finished just four seconds down on Van Aert before the top two prepared to take centre stage. Yeah, I think he looks a lot more, a uh, lot more core on him, moves less than last year, a lot more stability on his bike. We wait for the time of Tade Pogacar to this point. It's going to be pretty close. He's going to change. Pogaccia gets out, the mechanic gets ready. It's not that rapid. Here we go. Pogaccia goes. 
The bike change has happened. Now he needs to really fly. Wow, that was about 12 seconds. It's all about feel. It's all about how good you are on the day. Tade Pogaccia is going to go over the top of the climb with the fastest time so far. 45 seconds faster than Wout van Aert. Jonas Vengegaard is going to be one minute and five seconds faster than Tade Pogaccia. Come on, Jonas. Today you show to the world who is the strongest, huh? Come on, Jonas. This is to the fast winning stuff what you do, huh? Come on. Rodriguez crosses the line now. Pagacha's time though. He goes top of the leaderboard. 112 is the beating of Van Aert. But here comes Jonas Vengegaard. Pagacha finishes the second, eh? so he's also strong, eh? but you kill it, eh? you kill it. Come on, so proud of you. Still the line, Jonas, still the line, every second counts. This is legendary, Jonas, this is legendary. Come on, last 400 meters. Everything until the line. On your Jumbo Visma team radio and heard the message today you show the world who is the greatest yeah I mean I was uh, feeling great today uh, I think it's the best time trial I've ever done I uh, yeah I'm really proud of what I what I did today and I'm really happy about the victory I think today I even surprised myself with the with the time trial I did uh, I didn't expect to do so well in the time trial today, to be honest. I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but uh, is the Tour de France over? <laughs> no, there's still uh, still a lot of hard stages to come, so uh, yeah, we have to keep fighting the next days, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Vingegaard absolutely crushing the rest of the field and taking a big step towards defending his crown. It's his third Tour de France stage victory and the first in a time trial. The day now leads by a minute and 48 seconds from Pogaccia, while Yates and Rodriguez are separated by just five seconds in the scrap for third place. Jasper Philipsen was able to take it nice and easy as he looks ahead to the remaining sprint stages, notably Sunday's shootout on the Champs-Élysées. There were five points available on the climb today and Ciccone blasted his way up it even faster than Vingegaard to take them, extending his lead in polka dots. It wasn't Pogaccia's day, but you can guarantee that the Tour's best young rider will keep fighting until the bitter end. Still, Vingegaard has shown he's going to take some beating. Can you tell us why the Tour de France is not over yet? No, oh, it's definitely not over. Especially if it's tomorrow raining, then I can I can uh, promise you that it's gonna be interesting. <laughs>